largest port in the world. Almost as high as she's wide. Busiest port in the world. Beehive of 12 million people. Capital now to freedom-loving people of all the world. Port of superlatives, tallest this, biggest that, fastest this, longest that. The most people, the most business, the most jobs. Why? Why? Because of all the things she is. The port of New York, New Jersey is the best port in the world. The best port in the world. A modern port is made up of many things. One of the most important, beside the fact that a good port must be a good natural harbor for ships, is the vast array of man-made contrivances for the physical handling of goods. Goods of all kinds. Goods that pour into the port for export from the great productive land behind it, or for import from across the sea in front of it. Only the most efficient machines only machines designed to do the best job they have to do are good enough for the efficiency required of a modern port. Time is money in the shipment of goods. Ships must be unloaded promptly on arrival and reloaded as rapidly as possible. For a ship earns money only by moving the cargo in her hold. And the shipper of the cargo earns money only by its prompt delivery. So the myriad machines of a great port must pursue their tireless work around the clock and around the calendar, safely and speedily moving goods from where it is to where it's wanted. Goods, merchandise, the precious raw material of international commerce and international goodwill. Goods that may be in pieces small enough for a man to carry, or so large and so heavy that only one of the biggest cranes of its kind in the world can hoist its enormous bulk. The goods in transit through a great port may be anything, literally anything, and in the world's best port, it is everything. Exotic products from far off lands, destined for the dressing table of the spice shelf of a housewife in Peoria. Machinery parts from Detroit, destined for the Union of South Africa. Just name it. And if it's an article of commerce, you'll find it in transit through this port. Today, or anyway tomorrow. For there's nothing people buy and sell, exchange across the borders of free nations, that this port is not equipped to handle. Equipped with machinery and experience. To handle, to handle fat. For the freight moves, and the machinery moves it because of the people who know how. The men who move the goods in transit through the port district of New York, New Jersey, are legion. Men by the tens of thousands hustle along toward its destination every one of the millions of pieces of cargo that make up the astronomical total of tonnage shipped through this port. And for every piece of cargo, there is a piece of paper. To the rapid routing of freight, the papers, 
that determine its route, its destination, and all the other countless details of billing, financing, clearance, and receipt are just as vital as the men who know how to move the freight itself. And the people who know how to prepare the papers and what to do with them after they're prepared, how to keep them moving, are strong links in the long chain of human know-how that turns a natural harbor to a great port. Specialists, like freight forwarders, skilled in booking space, in arranging for port handling, transfer and clearance of cargo. Specialists, like customs brokers, who speed the inbound movement of dutiable goods, vital to the fast, efficient movement of the world's cargoes. And so are the people who appraise the value and check the quality of everything from antique furniture, jewelry, and diamonds, to exotic food stuff from all parts of the world. And so are the people who operate and manage the great banks that finance 75% of all of America's foreign trade. The people who operate and manage and guard the great warehouses and terminals that dot the whole port area. And so are the people who know how to keep the motor traffic of the port moving over the bridges and through the tunnels. The people who operate the trucks and locomotives and tugs are equally vital. And so are the people who pilot the ships and pilot the planes, and the people who load and unload them. And so are the people who administer and develop the business of the port, such as the commissioners of the Port of New York Authority, who plan and build for its future and promote its operation. Nowhere in the world, at any port, are there so many whose sole working purpose is to expedite the movement of goods. So many so expert, so many with the know-how it takes. For gathered together around this one port are nearly half a million people, nearly half a million people who work all day, every day at the job of making this port work better, faster, more economically than any other. To the people who know how, the pattern of swift cargo movement through this great port is as sharp and clear and as regular as the pattern of the streets of this great port. Yet, like the streets, the pattern of cargo movement crisscrosses back and forth and up and down over the entire port area. The reasons for this are simple. In this relatively small area of the Earth's surface, are the homes of 12 million people. For their own use, they buy more than $15 billion worth of goods every year, the biggest single consuming market in the world. A powerful magnet that pulls a vast array of cargo by every means of transportation from every corner of this productive nation, as well as from every corner of the globe. The movement of Boulogne is greater than that of most ports in the world. In addition, this area is the greatest manufacturing and processing center of the world, a vast factory whose raw material is drawn from and whose finished products are dispatched to all points of the compass. The movement of this cargo alone is more than most of the world's ports could handle. And finally, to the movement of goods coming in for consumption within the port of New York, New Jersey district, and the movement of goods to and from the factories and processing plants of the area is added the tremendous quantity of goods imported into the country and exported from it. Through this, the world's greatest natural gateway of international commerce. To keep all this vast array of goods in motion, simply to make this port work, it's perfectly obvious that it has had to develop the most efficiency and the most experience in the swift handling of cargo. To 
understand how it works and why, consider the port a platform, a giant freight platform. Onto and across this platform moves every single piece of cargo handled in the entire port area. Of course, before any freight can be moved off the platform, it has to be put on it. So let's see first how goods reach it from across the sea. On any day of the year, ships of the seven seas can be seen steaming in from the Atlantic, past Sandy Hook, and then by Coney Island through the Narrows into the protected deep water anchorage of Upper New York Bay. Just a short run to the piers of their destination. Nature made this one of the best deep water harbors in the world, and she obligingly folded around its waters 650 miles of coastline. Plenty of room to berth more than 400 ocean-going ships at one time. Whether they are the pack horses of commerce laden to the gunnels, or the sleek thoroughbreds of luxurious transportation arching their bows high above the waves. Ships flying 170 house flags, ships of every maritime nation on earth, regularly put into this port. Ships from every port of call on the globe, ships from Antofagasta, Barranquilla, ships from Zacapala, Yokohama, and Zanzibar. Here, they are sure of a market for their cargo, sure of speedy turnaround time, often made still faster by simultaneous cargo handling to harbor craft on one side, as well as to the pier on the other side. It's the unequaled flexibility of this port that attracts the cargo of one ship every 50 minutes. 10,000 ships every year. 10,000 ships that every year carry over 30 million tons of overseas freight to be unloaded or picked up from the great freight platform that is the port of New York, New Jersey. Piercing the mountains behind the port is the broad Mohawk Valley, the natural gateway from the west that made the New York, New Jersey area the nation's first great seaport. Through this gateway, the barges and motor ships of the modernized New York State Canal System funnel their cargo directly to the freight platform of the Port of New York, New Jersey. Also funneling into the port district from north, south, and west, a great land transportation network serves the port. The sturdy steel rails of nine trunk line railroads. More rail lines than serve any other seaport in the nation. operate huge terminal yards that are by far the largest at any seaport. The statistics of freight tonnage moved into and out of the port area by the railroads are utterly fantastic. More than 80 million tons every year. And so the rumble of freight cars is the most persistent single sound of activity at this port of endless activity. And yet another land transportation system serves the port, a vast network of highways. The sea lanes, you might say, of rubber-tired cargo carriers. By night, and by day, and by the thousand, over-the-road trucks converge on the great crossings built by the Port of New York Authority, under and over the Hudson River. Into the 
Singapore Harrier, the rolling freighters of the highway move solid loads of the nation's goods to berths at the receiving platforms of factories and warehouses and steamship piers. The mixed loads that require sorting and delivery in small lots move to the truck terminal platforms that dot the entire port district. Here, the trucks pause briefly to discharge their loads with the help of specially designed machines operated by men who know every trick of handling freight fast and safely. Men who know that the never-ending stream of incoming trucks must be kept steadily flowing. So from thousands of trucks every day, still more freight reaches the great platform of the port. The port of New Jersey, New York, is not only the crossroads of land and sea, but of the air as well. And conveniently located around the freight platform are the ports for ships of the air, an integrated regional system of airports for ships that know no barrier, of sea or land. Hour after hour, through the day and through the night, they wing their swift way from any point on the vast American continent. Loaded perhaps with the latest films from Hollywood, or Gladiola, picked this morning in the sunny fields of California. Or from the overseas world they come, perhaps with strange cargoes, uncured snake skins, diamonds, Swiss watch parts, or live cargoes. But whatever the cargo that comes by air, it too takes its place on the freight platform. The freight reaching the port of New Jersey, New York by air by land and by water, in a single year, is almost inconceivable. 200 million tons. Yet, as you see it now, it has not reached. Import cargoes must be distributed for consumption within the port area and for delivery throughout the nation. Domestic cargoes must be delivered to consumers and factories and processing plants within the area and set down in the holds of the hundreds of ships ready always for sailing from this port. Some of it, of course, must be temporarily warehoused. To fill this need, the port district provides handy to every terminal area a vast variety of cold and dry storage facilities equipped with machinery and experience for the safe custody of every conceivable kind of commodity. To move freight across the platform, so to speak, a tremendous array of specialized and often unique methods and equipment are constantly available. And so it is that with speed, dispatch, and efficiency, cargo of every kind, arriving at the port by every means of transportation, is delivered to shipside, ships of the air and ships of the sea, from waterside warehouses, by trucks coming directly over arterial highways, or by trains switched directly to the wharves. In some cases, whole trains of cars are carried aboard huge vessels, called sea trains, for delivery by sea to tracks at other ports where their journey is resumed by rail. And within the port itself, specialized harbor craft make it possible for every one of the nine trunk line railroads serving the port to deliver its freight to any destination whatever within the harbor lighterage limits. Car floats with railroad tracks carry freight cars across the harbor waters direct to shipside or to other tracks and terminals 
in the harbor area. In other cases, the freight is transferred to large craft that are literally floating boxcars, huge 400-ton boxcars. Some are refrigerated, others are heated. And there are deck barges, deep scows, equivalent to flat cars and gondola cars. Many are equipped with hoists for lifting heavy pieces. And there are busy self-propelled lighters to do a quick job of delivering small lots of freight. But no matter what kind they may be, the lighters of the harbor form a unique water belt line. A belt line so flexible that it is possible for every railroad serving the port to deliver freight to the side of any ship, anywhere in the harbor. And with equal speed and facility to pick up cargo from any ship, anywhere in the harbor. Thus it is that added all together, the unmatched facilities and know-how of the port of New York, New Jersey make it possible for the goods of trade and commerce to move on to and across and off the world's greatest freight platform from every source and to every destination in a ceaseless pattern of constant, efficient motion. Loading cargo aboard ship is an art, almost a science, requiring equipment designed by specialists and perfected by experience, operated by men who, through years of working at it, can hoist a loaded pallet or cargo sling through the air and bullseye it down through the exact center of a cargo hatch to rest in the steel hold as gently as if it were a crate of eggs. Perhaps you have some buses to export. If so, via the port of New Jersey, New York is your fastest route. Or, if it's lumber you're interested in, the equipment for that is here. And the same is true of grain. In fact, no matter what the cargo, be it crates, or boxes, bags, or drums, bales, or hogsheads, raw material in powder form, or liquid, light quick delivery cargo, or heavy cargo. It makes no difference at this port. Shipment via the port of New York, New Jersey is the fastest route to regular ports of call, as well as to the little known spots on the byways of the world's trade routes. Because at this port, you never miss the boat. It's the unmatched frequency and variety of direct shipping services to hundreds of ports throughout the world that make this the best port for the shipper of overseas freight. At least one ship will be sailing for every leading port on the globe later today or certainly tomorrow. She'll be back. <laughs>